You are, you may have heard me say on multiple occasions that the gear you choose doesn't really matter. So pretty much every single live stream I say that. And I mean it's true, the gear that you use is pretty much irrelevant. And it's also, it's also everything. Gazzy and I found this abandoned gold mine that just has gold stuck all over the clay. So we're out with a sluice box today to run a small bulk sample. You see, the thing is, humans have been mining gold in the same manner ever since we started mining gold, utilizing gravity. As prospectors, for as long as we've been mining, we've been letting gravity sort out the light stuff, from the heavy stuff. Except for a few notable exceptions, such as metal detecting and chemical extraction, we've always utilized things like sluice boxes and pans to do the heavy lifting. It's nice to be set up in shade for once because it is stinking hot. We've had non-stop thunderstorms again. This mine rarely has any standing water, so we have literally come out immediately after thunderstorms and we've got this puddle. And that's why we're able to use our little sluice box here today. We're gonna to do one wheelbarrow of 80 liters of pay dirt. And that's gonna tell us how much gold we can get when we bring a dry blower or a dry washer back up here. Did you bring your sweatpants today? I didn't bring my sweaty pants. So like, what kind of pants are you wearing then? My normal pants. That's odd. Welcome to the surface of Mars. Do I give up? I give up. Chew the bone. You win, Fern. You win. This is our pay dirt. It looks pretty barren, but from what we can tell, the old timers hit a clay layer that they couldn't really work because of lack of water up here. And the gold over the last 170 years from the leftover pay dirt has concentrated in all of these gutters. What? The clay content in this is a real pain in the ass and I can't really wet classify because getting a full wheelbarrow of water from way down there to up here would be a nightmare. So, so like, I'll just leave it in a safe pile here. Five minutes out from the sun. All modern equipment takes full advantage of gravity. Ultimately, it doesn't matter if you buy Garrett or Mine Lab or you buy Gold Rat or Gold Hog. They're all gonna work pretty damn good. But what does matter is why you choose it. You see, a good prospector takes his equipment to his gold fields, learns them intimately to find the best gold deposits. The pan you choose isn't important because of the brand, the color, how many riffles it has. It's important because of how it feels. If it feels good to you and you enjoy using it, you're gonna pick it up and take it to the gold fields. He found a relic. Oh my word. That is a rare sight on the gold fields. Underberg Cola. I see you, Fern. I know you said you didn't bring your sweatpants, but it sure feels like we're both wearing pretty sweaty pants right now. It's legitimately like 400 degrees out here. Yeah, a billion. Many prospectors were burnt to a crisp making this film. Now it must be said, there is obviously a time and a place for getting specific equipment. 
a cheap shovel or gold pan that you love using is always going to find you more gold than an expensive pan or shovel that you hate to touch. I have literally oh, sweat out more water than, than probably what's going to go through the sluice box in the next 10 minutes. It's so frustrating. The classifier's bogging up because of how much rain we literally just had a couple of hours ago. It's not quite 80 liters, but that'll do, pig. That'll do. Because this dirt is heavy clay based, if we don't add water to it and break up all of the clumps, we will get massive gold loss through the sluice. Once we got the dirt wet, it compacted. So when you dry classify, it's all fluffy. And if you look in the wheelbarrow here, where the water line is, is how much dirt we actually collected when the fluffiness reduced. So we really only got half a wheelbarrow. <laughs> And this is why your equipment selection is so critical. One of the reasons I change my equipment regularly, like green matting to gold hog matting, a batea pan to a garret pan, is to keep things fresh. Usually I hit a skill level where I've sort of maxed out the way that I use that tool, and it becomes very easy and therefore boring. So I change to something that I want to pick up, want to go out to the gold fields and use. For you, that passion or that interest might come from a multitude of different places, but I promise you a good place to start is choosing the pan that makes you excited to go out and use it. Because at the end of the day, if you want to find good gold, it's not the pan that's going to find it, it's you out there on the gold fields. This is where the paranoia kicks in, because you don't know how much gold you got. Do you, Bernie? We ran maybe 35 to 40 liters worth of classified dirt, and we could do that with a dry blower in literally seconds. So whatever's in this is gonna give us a really good idea of how much gold we could get when we set that system up. I don't want to take it too far down on the creek because it's a really easy way to lose gold so I'm going to take it home and clean it up. We'll just have a sneaky look first. Whatever gold we get in this is going to be the take from around 40-ish litres. And you can see we have a lot of very dense black sand and we're probably running a little bit of loss in the tailings as well just because of that clay. But look at that. That is a nice smile of gold. So we're going to take this home, get it on the scales and find out how much we could get if we ran a cubic meter of this stuff. I live streamed the entire cleanup process for this gold. So if you would like to check that out, I've left a link to it in the description below. And remember to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any other future gold prospecting videos. And here it is, the total amount of gold we collected from those drift mines next to a picture of me wearing a mustache for a bit of scale. I want to leave you with this thought. Consistency isn't exciting, but it's necessary. That means that you going out to the gold fields and looking for gold is ultimately what is going to lead you to it. But to make consistency exciting, choosing a piece of gear you fall in love with could just be the difference between you getting out on the gold fields and you not participating in the hobby at all. It would be super convenient to get some round numbers with this. Let's hope for 0.1 from 40 liters. 
here, we got way more than 0 0.1, 0 0.261. 0 0.261 grams of gold is worth around 22 Australian dollars at the time of recording. And if we scale the maths up, it equates out to 6.5 grams per cubic meter. And that's if we take the creme de la creme of pay dirt out of those erosion gutters. It's gonna dilute a little bit if we take dirt from around them. Definitely worth chasing, even with a dry blower or dry washes loss rate, we should be able to collect a fair amount of gold in the very near future. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please give your dog a big scratch behind the ears for me. Until next time, peace, and I'm out.